So about a year ago, Leah and I made a video where we talked about how we live without a car and how that choice actually made our life better in a number of measurable ways. And yet here we are today, car owners once again. So I suppose we have some explaining to do. Hey team, welcome back to another Levi's Save the World Hildebrand episode, the channel where we prove that you don't need to be a hero to save the planet. Today, Leah and I are going to be showing you our new car, and uh, we're gonna be talking about why we bought it. To be honest, we actually really debated like not sharing this on the channel because it would be easy for us to just own a car but to never share that online. But the whole part of this channel is being really transparent, so yeah, we're gonna tell you everything. Okay, we're we're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna show you the reality of our lives without getting into too nitty gritty of details. So uh, let's go look at the car. So Leah and I are the new owners of a used 2007 Honda Element SC, as you there can see behind us. Normally Levi and I don't name cars, but this is the first car that we ever bought together. So we've named him Earl. <laughs> Get it? Like Earl Grey, because it's gray. Yeah. It's just fun to say Earl. So Earl came with a cargo box on top of the vehicle. It has a standard four-cylinder engine that gets very average gas mileage, and we're gonna get into that later in the video. But as you can tell, it's not exactly the most aerodynamic shape for a vehicle. So for those of you who know about Honda Elements, you won't be surprised at what we're about to show you, but what the seats can do in the back is a huge part of why we bought this car. Yeah. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Look at these doors. Leah doesn't even I know how like to open that. them. <laughs> I do. Look at that. Well, first of all, both seats in the front go all the way back flat, which is kind of an interesting feature, I suppose, if you want to lay all the seats flat to sleep in it that way, I guess. But the real selling feature of the way this car is designed is in the back seats. So both seats in the back fold down flat and then flip up to the walls to reveal this full interior space. And what this means is that when we have these seats up, we have this humongous space in here where we can put my bike, stuff that we need to move, and even a bed if we wanna go and camp somewhere. So it was this interior space that was really appealing for us because this vehicle is not something that we are going to use a lot, but when we do use it, we want it to be something that's very functional for our needs. While we did contemplate like buying a camper van, uh, yeah, van life isn't like totally for us, but this is a really nice hybrid where we can go camping, we can sleep in the back, we have the storage up top, but it's not as big of a commitment to living in a van full time. And I think that that leads really nicely into explaining why we bought a car in the first place. Let's get inside and close all the doors and windows because it's really rainy outside right now. <laughs> so for those of you who have been following Leah and I for a while, you know that we're waiting on our condo to be built, which will be our future home. And in the meantime, we've been living with Leah's parents, we've lived with my parents, we've lived in a van, We've even lived out of a tent for a little while. So where we lived before, we had really good access to public transport, but that's just not the case for where we live now. And it's almost impossible to get around on the bus. And this is a case in a lot of places in North America where if you're living in a dense urban center, you can have a really walkable neighborhood or places where you can bike and get really good public transport. But that is not the case if you're living in smaller towns or if you can't afford to live right downtown. Also, up until this point, my mom has been super generous and letting us borrow her car, including when we took it for five weeks to go stay with Levi's parents. We're mooching quite a bit at this point, staying for free in Leah's family home. So we felt like this was a natural stage for us to have a bit of independence, right? <laughs> As a married 28 year old couple. We've gone back 10 years. We're both <laughs> acting like we're 18. We're like, yeah, car, woohoo, I could do anything. Freedom. But it's COVID, so stay in town. So we're kind of forced into a position where a car was necessary in our lives. We're not going to be moving back to our downtown apartment anytime soon. And so, 
We need this car to get around and do the things that we need to do every single day. And many of you might be thinking, well, you guys said in your car free video that you did all of the driving around that you needed using a car share program. And that's true. We did get away with using Moto for most of the things that we needed. But the reality is there isn't Moto in Nanaimo where we're currently living and it doesn't work for bigger trips. So another big reason of why we got the car is so that we can actually travel to go visit Levi's family because there actually is no bus or no train that can actually get you there. The car is the only option. 2020 has been a rough time for a lot of people and my family is not excluded from that. My grandfather passed away a couple months ago and my grandmother's health is in decline as well. So I feel like a part of this purchase was to have the ability to go back and visit my family whenever they need us to because up until now, we've been really isolated from them. But we would be lying if we said that we bought this car purely for functional reasons because we plan to have a lot of fun in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is it? No one does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> So as we mentioned before, this is going to be a utility vehicle for us to travel and get around and have fun outside. A big thing that we've realized living with my parents is that we love being outdoors and when we lived right downtown in Victoria, we just didn't get to do that enough. I've gone mountain biking three or four times because this thing fits my bike perfectly in the back without having to take it apart. And on top of that, we plan to build a little camping setup in the back so that we can take this thing on the road for multiple days. Also, with the way that things are going with COVID-19, it's probably going to be a long time before we're allowed to do international travel of any kind. So for us, it was a way that in the future, when it's safe to do so, we can go on sick road trips with this thing. <laughs> we go sick road trips with this thing. Suck. <laughs> suck road trips. Now, you might be wondering though, why didn't we buy an EV? Why not a Tesla or something like that? It's a very valid question. <laughs> and to answer it, we're gonna have to not be standing in the rain in the middle of this parking lot. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God. So why didn't we buy an EV instead of a gas powered car? Well, the reason for us, which is probably the reason for most people, is number one, cost. Now we probably could have financed the Model 3 or a new hybrid RAV4, but it would have been a pretty serious financial commitment. And that's something that we're not really prepared to do right now, considering with how uncertain the world is. On top of that, we are hypothetically one day going to be people with a mortgage if it, that ever happens. The idea is that eventually we aren't gonna use this car all the time. In an ideal world, when we move back to Victoria, we're gonna be able to park it and use it as a recreational vehicle and go back to using moto, car sharing, or biking and walking around the city. So if we were to buy a 40, $50,000 depreciating asset and just leave it parked in our garage collecting dust, that doesn't make a lot of sense financially, but also for the environment. See, EVs are only as beneficial as the cars that they replace or the way that they are used. Let me explain. So how, how comfortable do you feel talking about CO2 and EV versus CO2? And um, I'm gonna let you take the lead and why don't I circle back for the conclusion? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good, see you at the end. <laughs> See, an EV creates most of its environmental impact in the production phase. All the minerals and materials that go into producing an EV are very environmentally intensive, sometimes double or even triple that of an internal combustion engine car. Now, over the entire lifespan of a given vehicle, EVs are always less environmentally intensive, but it does take a number of years for that carbon footprint to even out. So if you are a person who commutes to work every single day, or puts a lot of kilometers on their vehicle, it makes a lot of sense from an environmental and fiscal point of view to get an EV because you're working towards that balance faster than normal. For Leah and I, we don't expect to put more than three or 4,000 kilometers on our car every year. And this is something I think we forget about a lot when we talk about the carbon footprint of a particular purchase versus another. Carbon footprint is only one 
element of the whole conversation. The production of that vehicle and the materials that went into it and the energy costs associated with that are always going to exist with that vehicle. And the longer that that vehicle lasts, the more that environmental impact from its initial production is spread out. So yes, Earl is a less efficient vehicle than getting an EV, and it will have a larger carbon footprint than something electric of an equivalent size over its lifespan. However, the fact that we are buying a used vehicle whose production footprint has already been accounted for and extending the life of that vehicle in ways that are meaningful for us, but not necessarily with the highest carbon footprint because we don't drive so much, it's actually maybe an even more sustainable option than buying a brand new EV off the lot. And this is a gray area that we don't like to delve into because it's complicated and it's messy. It's much easier to just say that Teslas are amazing and that they're gonna save the world and every gas-powered car is terrible. But the reality is cars, EV or not, are just not a very efficient way of getting things and people around. But unfortunately, we live in a circumstance where that's pretty much the only option. And that's a reality for a lot of people. And so here we are trying to delicately walk that balance. Uh, Leah, you can... <laughs> Leah, do you want to come back now? I come back now? Yes, you're, you're allowed to come. I haven't been banished? <laughs> so while we recognize that this isn't the most environmentally friendly choice, I think what we're trying to illustrate is the fact that it's not just a binary of this is right and this is wrong. It's far more complex than that. I think that's kind of the heart of the whole channel, right? It's trying to yeah. find something that works for you, but that also works for the planet. We're not all perfect. And, you know, for certain periods in our life, we're going to have a greater impact on the planet than in other periods of time, and that's okay. I mean, on the upside, we are living with my parents, so... Yeah, co-living, that's, that's sustainable. That's definitely sustainable. That's right. And COVID, so we don't leave the house very often. Mm-hmm like ever. On top of all of this, there's also that privilege and accessibility piece where yeah. we can't afford to buy a car. Can we afford to buy a Tesla? No, <laughs> but we can afford to buy a car and we know that that's not the reality for a lot of folks. And with all of that in mind, we want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with us. We really appreciate it and we can't thank you enough. Ooh, you took a little remix on the, on the outro there. That was yes, nice. Yes, thank you. And of course, if you are subscribed to this channel, which you very much should be, then we will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to reach for oh, it. Sorry. <laughs> oh, how do I turn it off? Wait, it's off.